Hello and welcome back to yet another day of Spinal Cord Injury Awareness Month. These uh, days keep coming and so do the videos, at least as long as my voice lasts. Well, today we're going to talk about clothing. You might be thinking, okay, what does uh, clothing have to do specifically with someone that has a spinal cord injury? It's clothes. Well, stay tuned and you'll find out. One of the big things that people with a spinal cord injury need to be concerned about is pressure sores and having kinds of problems with the skin and that can lead to a whole mess of problems. Therefore, we need to be careful of what we wear. So, if you think about, say, a regular pair of jeans or jean shorts, that if you look at them in a store or online, whichever, look at the back of them, and you'll see that there are a bunch of lines that come together right in the middle of the back end, right on the butt. And if you're sitting all day and can't feel what you're sitting on, then having a whole bunch of lines that come together in one spot is, well, not a good idea. After, who knows, a couple hours or even less of sitting on them, it can cause red spots on the skin, which then lead to holes and pressure sores and a whole bunch of problems. Therefore, we need to be careful with what kind of pants we wear, to, for starters. Mm. And yeah, I give jeans as an example, but really any kind of pants do this. Mm. Khaki pants or anything of that sort that has pockets in the back that uh, those pockets then have velcro or buttons which again after sitting on them for hours that's not a good thing someone that is able to feel and knows that it is uncomfortable can wiggle and move around a bit but again if you have a spinal cord injury you can't do that therefore if you look at the front of my jean shorts, they look normal, and they are, I just bought them as they were, but if you look at the back of them, I have had them altered that the back is taken out so there are no pockets, and the lines that come together on those pairs are no longer there, and I just have them replaced with a flat piece of fabric, which is what I sit on. And when I'm sitting, unless you look really close, you can't really tell that they're any different than normal. And if you are looking that close, I kind of wonder why you're looking that close on my butt anyway. However, that's not a problem I've usually noticed. However, if I'm just around the house or not really going anywhere that needs more formal clothing, let's say, then what I normally wear is just a pair of knit shorts, as I call them. So, as I have on right now, they are just fabric. And don't have zippers or anything that has any problems at what I'm sitting on. So that is also what's good. However, you also see that I go barefoot. And I pretty well go barefoot most of the year. So as of this recording, I've been barefoot now for a total of two and a half years, and actually more than. 
So the question might be, why? Well, one of the reasons is that in order to reduce pressure problems or any types of issues, then it is a good idea to reduce the amount of clothing I wear as much as possible. And for one, if I wear any kind of footwear, I have more muscle spasms, which that's explained in another video. But I also have had trouble with red areas from shoes and them being put on improperly and actually broke a toe because of that. And I also am barefoot because it's something I like to promote of foot health, but as well as part of my faith of reminder to bring good news. So those are all the reasons that I very rarely, if ever, put anything on my feet. And if there are any other quadriplegics or paraplegics that are watching this, then I would really highly recommend going barefoot as well. That it reduces a lot of problems. And really, as long as you're in a climate that is not too cold or you're just out for a very short amount of time, it really works well. But along that lines of trying to reduce as much clothing as possible, again, for pants, as I said, trying to reduce lines and all that, the more layers I have, the more possibilities there are for wrinkles as well. So that's why a lot of people with spinal cord injuries only wear shorts or pants that don't have anything underneath. And I also much prefer wearing shorts and ones that go at least a couple inches above my knees so that I can see down to my feet and know where I'm driving and so I don't run into things as much. But that's the bottom half. The top half of shirts, they aren't quite as picky. And as you've seen in these videos, I'm not that much of a fashion guy. I wear a lot of old advice from something shirts that people just started getting me for a while. However, I do like to wear nice shirts when I'm out, say, at church or speaking somewhere. And recently I got some new dress shirts. However, those do have an issue that my shirt size is medium and sometimes large. But I usually wear a medium shirt. However, for a dress shirt, that's too tight on my neck. Because, as we saw in yesterday's video, my head needs to move around a lot. And my neck is therefore my strongest muscle in my body. And therefore, I have a thick neck. And at the moment, I have a stiff neck as well. So, in order to get these dress shirts to fit me, I got them a lot larger than my regular size, so they would fit my neck. And then, I got them altered in order to hopefully fit my trunk a little bit better. However, they're still too big to fit on my shoulders and need a lot of extra work. And I've had them now for a few months and I still haven't been able to wear them yet. That's part of living with a spinal cord injury, unfortunately. That is hard to fit on clothes and for me to find the time for it as well. Finally, with clothing, it hides when I may be having a problem somewhere, like red spots. So, therefore, if I'm 
obviously not on video, then I spend a lot of the day without anything on. It allows my body to breathe more and decreases any type of pressure problems. And also, I like to be able to see my body as well. I know logically that yeah, in my shorts there are legs and chests and everything else, but my head can't feel that. that there is a body below my head much. I do have some feeling, but not a lot. So therefore, if I see in a mirror that my head is connected to all the way down to my feet, it kind of is calming, I guess. But it's something that isn't really talked about a lot with spinal cord injury, but it's something that I have found over the years that works well for me. So I spend in probably a 24 hour period about uh, half of it or so without wearing anything. But that is what it takes for clothing for someone with a spinal cord injury. And one last part is that again for jeans and that kind of thing. Also I have to make sure that the front or the zipper is long enough to be able to do things like, say, restroom needs. But that uh, will be another video later on. So, thank you for watching, and until the next time, bye for now.